Let's talk top five losers in the Vikings big old dubski. All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lumpagus show. I'm One Bar with Lumpagus, and you know what? There is no losers today. No. We just whooped some ass in Atlanta with our third-string quarterback, but we'll find some just because we got to we, we have to. Because we're the One Bar and Lumpagus show, we stick to what we do. We're going to have winners in games that we get our asses kicked. We're going to have losers in games when we kick ass. We're going to do it. It's not easy for us to do it because we're in a moment of jubilation. I'm easy. We're still laying in the afterglow. Our seed is still spilled on the floor. Enjoying this victory. But we're going to find some losers in this one. Before we do, hit the subscribe button. Yeah, we're at uh, 10,100. I cannot wait until we mm. get to 11,000. Uh, so let's. So we're not going to do five. I think we got three. And, and it was hard to find that many. It was hard, uh, but we have to do it anyways. Let's, let's start off with... Let's start with a running back, Alexander Madison, 16 carries, 44 yards, averaged 2.8 yards on the ground, did have two catches, 49 yards, and that beautiful, beautiful touchdown. He did. And so he did some good games in receiving game. But as far as running the ball goes, and I, and I really think this was a tale of two halves because the first half, it was brutal. There was just nothing happening. Constant loss. I mean, you run the ball here with three yards, negative. You run the ball left. Negative two yards up the middle, negative one. Just shit wasn't there. And I just feel like it, it did get better in the second half. They were finding some room, but I just feel like Madison's I think there is holes there. I think there's creases. Oh. Other box other backs seem to be able to find those. Madison just can't do it. And it's just happening game after game after game. Well, I mean, Cam Akers, Ty Chandler, the more type of running back that are going to be more looking for those holes, more a little bit dancing around where Madison's just that kind of just north-south type of runner. Uh, but it's it's painful. I mean, if he was a wide receiver, he'd probably have been on the top five winners of the list because of that great, great mm -hmm. touchdown. He's not. He's a running back, and he doesn't get any yards on the ground. Uh, he's just he, he has the worst average amongst all of our running backs as far as yards. In the world. Uh, no, just mostly on the Vikings. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I don't know how they fix it. I don't know if it's fixable. I don't know if this is on the offensive line. I don't know if it's on Madison, know. whatever it is. It's not working, and uh, we had to pick somebody, so Madison's on the list. And I just want to see him go back to being a number two. He's clearly not number one. So like We don't have, we don't have somebody to put. We up. don't. We don't have one right now, but I think that's what he is. He's a change of pace. He's the second guy. That's where he exceeds and where he excels, and I think he needs to get back to that. But, we again, we don't have that guy right now on the team. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to defense. Let's go to Caleb Evans. Um, he just had a rough start. A couple, he did. A couple really gross missed out. Yeah, some gross missed cat tackles, some bad coverages, some bad plays early in this game. He did make up for it in the second half, which is kind of making me feel a little bit gross about putting him on this list. But uh, his dirty. first half wasn't good, and he's had he's had these moments of bad play uh, all season long. Even him during his rookie year, where like he looked good a couple times, then he has some really bad plays, and uh, the bad plays early in this one really stood out. You said he had a, a a good half and a bad half. What what do you think is your good upper from waist up or waist down? What is your good half and bad half? Uh, I think it's I, I well I think it's uh, waist down, but it's also the front half. Well, no, what what's that's the bad half or good half? No, the bad half is waist down from the back. Oh yeah, no, I've <laughs> I've seen both halves. I will absolutely agree with that. So yeah, this is this is nitpicky. So yeah. Caleb Evans, we, he did end up having a actually pretty damn. Good I feel game. like he redeemed himself. He did. The he first did. half was, was gross. Great redemption story. Uh, our last loser, and as always, put your losers in the comments if you have one. But let's let's throw it over to the big man, the punter, Ryan Wright. And when you're going to your punter to find a loser, you know the game went pretty he was well. A winner a lot of the times last year. He was, but uh, especially late in this one, or he had the punt where I think it went. I think he punted it from like the forty, and they got it at the twenty. Uh, not great, Ryan, on that one. What the hell you were doing there? That should have been a perfect position to pin them inside, not only the 10, but probably even the 5. Uh, yeah, he actually had a lot of negative comments in our post-game show. I think he was a couple people's turn of the game, and uh, we're going to piggyback off that and give it to yeah. him here he as had, loser. He had three punts, averaged 44.3, had one inside the 20. People are bitching, complaining, like, you know, hey, this isn't the same Ryan right we saw last year. He's still got that big old hog of a leg. Yeah. He's still a damn good punter. There's no issues here. We have no issues with our punter. Ryan Wright is damn good. Just didn't have his best game. And, you know, when you're scrounging for some losers, it's easy to go to the punter because nobody gives a shit about the punter. 
and which is fine because we won. We're five and four. We won four in a row. Let's go. We just Let's won go. with no starting left tackle, our four string quarterback, Woo! no Justin Jefferson, no KJ Osborne, and we're still winning this damn game. So, yes, these guys are losers, but we won. We're all winners. All right, let's do it. Let's go, baby. Five and four, storming to get the number one of the North, baby. Hey, don't cut me off this time on my fact. I won't. Mona Lisa was stolen from the Louvre in 1911, which attracted more visitors to see the empty space than the actual painting itself. Dang it! 